Here you have a closed loop feedback system. Here's the plant and here's the controller. The plant has a parameter P and the controller has a parameter K. The question is, what is the range of P and K that will make the closed loop system stable? And to do that, we can use the route Hurwitz stability criterion and we'll need the transfer function. So first step, let's define the closed loop transfer function y over r. In this case, this transfer function is simple. y of s over r of s is simply ks plus 2 divided by s squared times s plus p plus ks plus 2, which gives if you now rearrange the expression, ks plus 2 divided by s squared, s to the power of 3, plus ps squared, plus ks plus 2. Now that we have the transfer function, we can prepare the Routh array. This is a third order transfer function. We start with s to the power of 3 and you go down all the way to s to the power of 0. And now we can put the coefficients in the matrix. Coefficient of s to the power of 3 is 1. s to the power of 2 is p. s to the power of 1 is k. And s to the power of 0 is 2. All we need to determine now is these two elements. We're starting with this one. We have 1 times 2 minus k times p divided by negative p. So here we have 2 minus kp over negative p. This element is 0, which means that this element needs to be 2, right? p times 0 minus 2 times this entire element, all divided by the same element, 2 minus kp over negative p with a negative sign. So this negative sign cancels this negative sign. This part of the expression is the same. We are left with 2, which is the number we had there. So this is 2. And of course, the last element here is 0. Now that we have the array, we can look at the first column to determine the stability condition. We want no sign changes in the first one. So here we go from positive 1 to p. The first condition for stability is that p has the same sign as the number that we have here. So this is positive, which implies that for stability, p needs to be greater than 0. If p is negative, then you have one sign change. Now, assuming that this condition is met, we also want this term to be greater than 0. So this term here can be rewritten as negative 2 plus kp over p. And we want this to be greater than 0, which means that now p multiplies 0, which is 0, and we are left with kp greater than 2 goes to the other side, 2. And negative 2 goes to the other side, positive 2. So here are the conditions for stability. k times p needs to be greater than 2, with p being greater than 0. If these two conditions are met, we see that in the first column here, there will be no sign change, everything will be positive, and the system is said to be closed-loop stable.